What's up, guys? This is Chad down in California. Uh, we're hanging out at Venice Beach right now. I'm with an old friend from high school. We've been uh, best friends since she probably the sixth grade. He's got a lot of questions that I don't necessarily think about and a lot of subjects that I don't necessarily think about when I'm making my, uh, my van videos. So I'm gonna hand the camera to him and uh, he wants to do a little interview of some of the questions that he's got. And I think it's gonna really pertain to a lot of the uh, questions that the general public really has about living in their van. See you guys. Uh... I don't live in a van, and I'm sitting here with Chad, and I'm asking him questions about his van life thing, and I thought it might be kind of cool to, you know, put this on the YouTube channel. So Chad's like, cool about it. So let's just see what Chad has to say. This is totally free flow. None of this is scripted. So we turn over to Chad, and let's ask some questions. Right, so Chad, we're just going to do a couple quick, we're going to pull out of the whole personal thing. Let's just sure. give a couple quick pit pieces of advice to your subscribers about living in a van. You ready for the, the yeah, fast action round? Okay, Chad, <laughs> so tell me a couple things. Okay. Why a van and not an RV? Okay, van again? Vanigans are the shit, like, see any of these Yeah, you're not supposed to say that, dude, on YouTube. Okay, beep it out. Beep! <laughs> You see any of these compact parking spots, you can park a van again in any of these spots. You can blend in with any of these cars just like you're a compact car parking in. You, I, I could pull up here and I could camp right here if I really had to and if I really wanted to. In an RV, you're not going to get away with that. Number one, you can't fit in this spot. Uh, number two, like going out into the desert where I love to go and shoot my photography, there's no way you're taking a van, uh, an RV out there. But a van again, they're unbelievable machines. Okay. But Chad, I'm going to interrupt you. Okay. Apparently, a lot of people live in RVs, That's right? True. So, what are you giving up by not living in an RV and choosing to live in a van? Okay. I see, mean, seriously. See, number one, like I'm not living in an RV because I have to. I'm not living in an RV because it's comfortable. Um, I'm out chasing a dream. I'm out chasing a dream to become a photographer, to become a videographer, and to be able to go to some of the most amazing places in the in the world and capture that photography. And so. That's why I'm living in a van again because a van again allows me to do that and the RV does not allow me to do that. Like the people that are living in an RV, like that's great. If that makes them comfortable, that's good. But I'm out for a specific purpose trying to chase a dream and, and the van again I, I feel is the best option for me. Okay. So you've convinced me now that if I'm going to live on the, on the street, right, yep. I'm going to live in a van. Okay. Now you keep saying van again. But there's other types of vans, right? There is. I mean, so why van again? Why not something else? I mean, <laughs> what if what if one of your subscribers likes? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't even know what other vans there are, dude. Okay, well, check I live this in out. a house. So tell tell them why a van again? Why not a Ford or why not a Chevy? Okay. Or why not even a, a Toyota? Okay, I I 100% support the uh, uh, the Ford and the Chevy. It's the Econoline or the. Uh, I don't even know what the Chevy version is. But anyways, the big panel vans, I think those are awesome. Like, full size, uh, if you can buy a an open uh, panel van that's just, like, bare bones, like, then you can build whatever you want and whatever you need. Um, I mean, real quick, you say yeah. build whatever you need, whatever you want. Yes. Like, what do you mean build? You I can don't build get a, it. You can build a bed. You can build a couch. You can build a shelf. You can install a refrigerator. You can install a TV, you can install batteries, you can install all sorts of stuff okay. in a wide open panel van. Okay, so keep going with the original question. Okay, so I fully support that option. I think that's great. Um, I chose a van again, um, the Westphalia to be exact, because of its full on 100% camper. Uh, it's already got a refrigerator in it, it's got propane on it, it's got all the camper storage on it. A lot of my friends are like, wow, I don't want all that storage and stuff. but. If you're going to live in a van, the storage comes in 100% completely compatible, or like really convenient. Um, I couldn't do what I'm doing without all the storage opportunities that I have with the van again. Um, a lot of people want to do the Weekender, uh, which is the pop top, but it doesn't have any of the storage. It's just a wide open van again. Um, I wouldn't be able to do it without all the storage. Uh, the fridge comes in really handy. So that's what I, that's what I did. It was already built for me in the van again, Westphalia. Um, if I were to do it again, and for whatever reason I didn't go with a van again, I would go with one of the panel vans because I could build whatever I want. Okay, so van again, Westphalia, same thing? Van again is the base model, that's the, the base van. Uh, Westphalia is another separate company 
where Volkswagen sent their vans into Westfalia. Westfalia takes them and they, they do all the camper stuff. They put all the cabinets, they put the pop top in them. They do all the creature comforts to make it a, a, an actual camper van. So Westfalia is an upgrade to a van again. Yep. Yep. Nice. It's a okay. Conversion van, basically. So how about years? I mean, I'm going to buy one now, right? Okay, so you've convinced me, right? I should go van again, okay. Westfalia. Yep. So I'm in the market now. Okay. What What's kind of breakdown? I mean, yeah, it'd be nice to get a brand new one, right? What do you get with a brand new one versus other years? And okay. where are you saying I should buy one in? Well, number one, the Vanagon body style, which is highly sought after these days. They're very versatile as far as off-road capabilities and stuff. The Vanagon body style stopped in 1991. Um... They started making them in 1980, I want to say. It might have been 79. But the thing is, um, in 83 and a half, they started going to the liquid-cooled engine. So the liquid-cooled engine is definitely the way to go. Um, and between 83 and 87, there were some interior changes. They had like just a brown, tan interior, just like kind of depressing and whatnot. So in 87, so from 87 to 91, they upgraded to kind of the modern interior. So I really try to steer people to the 87 to 91 era. They've got kind of the cool modernized interior. And um, beyond that, they went to the Eurovan that doesn't necessarily have the uh, reliability that the Vanagon has. And it doesn't have the cool, unique style. So there's a lot of... Uh, retro style and the vanigans and whatnot so 91 is your last option for that so if people are looking in the 87 91 range what price should they be looking i mean i'm going to buy one now right may, may not have all the bells and whistles but i want to get into the market right i'm ready to live in a van what should i be watching today it's it's 2013 what's the market <laughs> well, for a vanigan for a, for a base model vanigan if you want to just get a, a regular passenger Vanagon, you could probably find one anywhere from like four to six or seven thousand, depending on how fancy you want to go. As soon as you started getting into the camper van style, uh, to where you have all the cabinets, the stove, the refrigerator, the pop top, then you're jumping in from ten to twenty thousand dollars, depending on the condition. It's all over the board. I mean, the, the key is to find something that's in good condition uh, so that you can live comfortably or enjoy it comfortably, even if you're just going out to use it for the weekend. Um, then you start jumping into like the four-wheel drive versions. Um, four-wheel drive versions are more rare. They're super awesome. They're highly sought after. But then uh, a four-wheel drive van again, uh, or I'm sorry, a Westphalia, you're anywhere from like twenty-five to forty thousand dollars. Okay, crazy. so I'm getting in the market now, right? I'm yeah. doing it. I'm gonna yeah. jump in eighty-seven to ninety-one. Yeah. Okay, tell your subscriber, right? If if they're gonna jump into this game. Tell them exactly what they should target, how much they should spend, and what upgrades they should do right away, and then what upgrades they should upgrades they should plan for in the next like year. Okay. You know, I mean, what's the most important thing to do? You bought a you bought you buy one, <coughs> you spend X number amount, you know, X number yep. of dollars. Well, kind of go through that whole process. The the, the first most important thing to, to jump into is uh, your drivetrain, uh, making sure your motor. It's really it's really 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 hard to find these vehicles with less than two hundred thousand dollars uh, with two two hundred thousand miles on the on the engine the train and the drivetrain so if you can find one under well under uh two hundred thousand miles um anywhere from ten to fifteen thousand uh, i'm gonna say that's a really good deal um once they get over two hundred thousand like you want to start looking for tranny rebuilds you want to start looking for motor rebuilds and then number one, starting off with something that's clean and comfortable. A lot of the ones that I see that are for sale are falling apart. Um, you know, you want to start out with something that's good and comfortable. Um, but yeah, you know, look for motor upgrades. Subaru is a big, a big conversion that's really popular. If you can find one that's already got a Subaru conversion, great. You know, that's a, that's a good move to go. And uh, yeah, that's what I'd say I'd start out with. Uh, as far as like upgrades you want to do like right away, I would say anything that's going to make your life more comfortable. The things I did to mine, I added the gas shocks to the pop top. Um, I added a dual battery charger. Um, I added an, an auxiliary battery. Um, I added uh, um, inverter. Um, I added a whole bunch of stuff to it to, to make my life, as far as living in the van, more comfortable. And it doesn't necessarily have to go to living in a van, but if you're just going to go out and do adventures and you want to be self-sufficient, in the van, uh, you know, some of those upgrades are, are what you want to do. Nice. So cost-wise, what do these upgrades cost? You talked about the cost of a van, what, you know, sort of the market for a van. Yeah. 
what what do these upgrades cost them? Well, you know what? I mean, depending on how fancy you want to go with it, but to get to get it like really self sufficient, where you can be out in the middle of nowhere for and for you know a couple of weeks and not have to worry about it, you could expect to spend anywhere from a thousand to two thousand dollars on some of these accessories to to get it up. And I mean, it's limitless. Like I mean, the sky's the limit with what you can do with these things, from solar panels and all this stuff. You can be a hundred percent off the grid for as long as you want. Um, but anywhere from one to two thousand dollars on up to like five thousand dollars, you could really pimp those things. Up. So where should people go? Right, they want to do upgrades, research. Where are you going to direct them? Is it, is it internet? Um, is it some catalogs? Internet, what? Internet, internet's definitely the way to go. The Samba, the Samba dot com is a great resource. It's a forum, so there's lots of conversations going on. How do you spell it? Like uh, S A M B A. Okay, the Samba. The Samba dot com. That's a great one. Uh, Go Westy is a company out of uh, San Luis Obispo, uh, California, that uh, they do a lot of like really fancy upgrades to the vans. Uh, a lot of people really look towards those guys for their upgrades. I got like 90% of my upgrades from that company. You can order online. Uh, you can visit them in person. Uh, they got a lot of really cool stuff for their vans. Nice.